Well, it's not even the offseason yet, and we already have a big trade to talk about. The Tampa Bay Lightning reacquired defenseman Ryan McDonough, along with a fourth round pick in this year's draft, in exchange for a seventh round pick in this year's draft and a second round pick in next year's draft. It's a little bit peculiar for a trade to be happening at this point in the season. After all, the Stanley Cup playoffs are still going on. We're only one game deep into the conference finals at this point, but I think it may be signaling towards one of two things right now, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But for now, let's focus on some of the more immediate implications of this deal. Quick little history recap here. Ryan McDonough was originally dealt to the Tampa Bay Lightning from the New York Rangers back in the spring of 2018 in an effort to bolster what was supposed to be a very competitive Tampa Bay Lightning team. Ryan McDonough instantly became a core component of this Tampa Bay Lightning team as well as a desperately needed leader on the defensive side of the puck. And despite the fact that the very next season they lost in the first round to Columbus by being swept. And we really just don't need to talk about that anymore. Ryan McDonough then went on to help Tampa Bay win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, as well as go to a third where they fell to the Colorado Avalanche. After losing that series to the Colorado Avalanche, the Tampa Bay Lightning desperately needed some cap dumps and Ryan McDonough with his $6.75 million contract was an easy name to put on the chopping block. And they ended up trading him to the Nashville Predators for basically nothing. The Lightning ended up getting two players in return during that trade, the first of which being Grant Mishmash, a name which I definitely didn't make up, who is an AHL prospect that has yet to see a single game of NHL ice, and Philippe Myers, a defenseman who in his several seasons with the Lightning has played a grand total of 16 games at the NHL level. So you can see what I mean when I say the Lightning got basically nothing in return. The more immediate implications of this trade being that the Tampa Bay Lightning continued to gift away early draft picks in what I assume is an effort to win more Stanley Cups, but it essentially means that at this point, their earliest pick is a third round pick in next year's draft. They do not have a first nor a second round pick until 2026. And even though you can argue that historically, the Lightning have found those diamonds in the rough in rounds three or later, think names like Andre Pallad and Braden Point, Anthony Sorelli, Matthew Joseph, it still doesn't bode well for the Lightning that they are missing out on the potential top end talent by not having, and I reiterate, a first or a second round pick until 2026. Eventually, the bill is going to come due for the Lightning's lack of early round picks. I imagine that if I'm trying to insert myself into the shoes of Julian Brisebois, he's attempting to hold on to these last little bits of this great dynamic era in Tampa Bay Lightning hockey before he has to finally face the reality of entering a full rebuild. The other immediate implication of this trade is that the Lightning's already razor thin cap space has just been whittled down even more. And yes, this number from Cap Friendly does take into account that the NHL salary cap is expected to raise up to around $87.7 million this coming season. So this projected cap space is pretty accurate as of right now. And to make matters worse, starting next season, the Lightning no longer get the cap relief from Brent Seabrook's LTIR contract, which basically would have negated the deal for Ryan McDonough. So yeah, now they really are in cap trouble. Basically meaning that the Tampa Bay Lightning have $5 million to work with in this offseason as they are staring down seven unrestricted free agents on the roster and one restricted free agent. Of the seven unrestricted free agents, three of them are defensemen being Hayden Fleury, Matt Dumba, and Calvin DeHaan. I honestly wouldn't anticipate that the Lightning bring any of those three back, but if they are going to bring one back, my gut tells me it'll be Matt Dumba. Here's where the trouble really starts though. The other four unrestricted free agents, the forwards, you have Austin Watson, who spent most of the year injured, four points in 33 games. Not great, he's probably gone. Tyler Mott, a fairly reliable fourth line player, nine points in 69 games, and he did get himself a couple of shorthanded goals, but again, I think he's gone. You have Anthony Duclair, who was acquired at the trade deadline and instantly became dynamic for this team. 15 points in 17 games, two points in five games during the playoffs. He instantly gelled with that top line alongside Point and Kucherov. And he was making $3 million last year. I think it's reasonable to expect that he'll get the same. You kind of have to bring him back, right? And yet all six players that I've mentioned so far pale in comparison to the unrestricted free agent status of one captain 
Steven Stamkos. This is not a video about Steven Stamkos. That will be coming later down the road. But we can't not talk about him right now as it pertains to the Ryan McDonough trade, mostly for two reasons. Number one, Steven Stamkos was making $8.5 million last year. Actually, outside of his entry-level deal, he has never made less than $7.5 million a year. There's no reason to think that he's going to command any less than that going forward. Considering the fact that the Lightning have just over $5 million to work with in this offseason, even if Julian Breezebois manages to talk Steven Stamkos down to the most ridiculous hometown discount, and he gets him at $5 million a year for the rest of his career, that still gives the Lightning zero dollars to address other needs in this offseason. Number two, this trade right here could tell us what the Lightning are about to do in the next coming weeks. But this trade basically indicates to me that one of two things is about to happen, and more than likely, it's about to happen quickly. Possibility number one is that they dump Steven Stamkos. Whether they let him walk and sign somewhere else during free agency, or they try to trade his contract away before July 1st, it is a possibility, one that we kind of have to talk about. Bringing back Ryan McDonough. May I remind you, a $6.75 million contract may be a not-so-subtle signal to Steven Stamkos that the team is done with his $8.5 million contract, plus whatever he may command during the offseason, and they're ready to just say toodles. But I'm not certain that makes a ton of sense, because if you're going to acquire somebody for $6.75 million, you probably are convinced of one of two things. Either this player is going to help you win right now in the immediate future, or it is promising young talent that you are going to want to rebuild your team around. And not only is Ryan McDonough definably not young talent at 34 years old, but the Lightning have already given their big time extensions to their future core, to their younger players that they're going to build around, being Brandon Hagel, Nick Paul, and Anthony Sorelli. So even though I could see this as a possibility, that the Lightning are bringing back McDonough and they're going to dump Steven Stamkos, it doesn't strike me as a very likely move. The other possibility, the one that's much more likely in my eyes, is that the Lightning are essentially getting the boys back together. They want to recapture some of the magic from those recent Stanley Cup teams in an effort to go win a couple more, even just one more. Ryan McDonough was a key part of that success. Not only was he a leader both on and off the ice, he played the game smart. He plays defense responsibly. In every season where he played for the Lightning and one of the two seasons that he played for the Predators, he led the team in blocked shots. And while that's not necessarily a impressive statistic to have on your scorecard, it still means that he's doing something right. He knows the game well enough to know where the shots are coming from. He knows how to get down. He plays responsibly. Knowing him and his history with the Lightning, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if he takes over power play number two away from Mikhail Sergachev this upcoming season. He fits into that role really well. Again, he can be a dynamic offensive player when you need him to be, but at the end of the day, he's a defensive first kind of guy. He's a shutdown defenseman, the kind that the Lightning really haven't had never since he left. He's a strong skater, he's a big guy, he plays smart, he plays a lot of minutes, he plays on the penalty kill, he plays on the power play, he can do basically anything that this team needs him to do, and he's already proven that! The team is happy to have McDonough back, the fans are happy to have McDonough back, I am quite certain that John Cooper is also happy to have McDonough back. And there's one other thing that indicates to me that the Lightning really are just trying to recapture the golden days, and it's a quote from Victor Hedman recently. This tweet from Adam Johansson talked to Victor Hedman after the McDonough trade, quote, I'm super happy. He's such a close friend. I just texted him. Let's bleeping go. And about the Stamkos contract, quote, we're just waiting for it. There's no Tampa without him. It will take a lot for 91 not to be a Tampa player. All of this indicates to me that the Lightning are going to give it one last shot. McDonough has two years on this contract. At that point, he'll be 36. Who knows if he continues playing? Hedman has one more year in his contract. Kucherov has three more years on his contract. Vasilevsky has four more years on his contract. Outside of Steven Stamkos, that's pretty much your core right there that isn't signed long term. And if I am right about that, then there are a lot of things that need to happen in this offseason to bring back Steven Stamkos, to get the band back together, to give it one last ride but we're not gonna talk about that in this video. At some point here in the near future, I'm gonna do another video, maybe two depending on length, talking about the Steven Stamkos saga, the case for keeping him versus the case for getting rid of him. 
and in the case that they do keep him, what the Tampa Bay Lightning need to do with their salary cap restrictions in order to make that happen. But in the meantime, let's just enjoy the fact that Mac Attack Ryan McDonough is once again a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's it. That's all I got for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for giving me just a little bit of your time. I hope that you're enjoying these playoffs. I I'm actually enjoying them more now that my team is out because, well, I'm not stressed and yelling at my camera for the entertainment of strangers. But until I see you again, remember, go Bolts! And just between you and me, is anybody actually rooting for the Panthers? No? Good.